What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Lazy Player's Guide to 99 Slayer. I hope you all are having a fantastic day, whatever day that you are watching this video. So throughout this guide, I'm going to be showing you guys a pretty lazy way to get to 99 Slayer. And I'm also going to be showing you some other things as well as task extensions and what you should buy. So as usual, I'm still looking for the best loot screenshots in old school RuneScape. If you think you have one of those and want it to be featured in a video, send it to the email address right here on the screen. If you're looking for some PVM friends to make or go out and do some bossing with people, my clan chat and my Discord information are always in the description down below. If you're looking for certain information about the Slayer skill, there are also timestamps in the description below. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the Lazy Player's Guide to 99 Slayer. Let me tell y'all what, I have been waiting so long for this guide. Many of you who have been following my channel for a while know that Slayer is my favorite skill, and when it comes to my favorite skill and being lazy, well you know I've got you for this one. So for this guide, I can't really give you hours to completion or experience per hour statistics because of the way the Slayer skill operates. It all depends on what tasks you're assigned and what you decide to do. What I will be helping you with throughout this guide is Slayer Unlocks as well as Task Blocking for certain Slayer Masters. The Task Blocks will be short and sweet and only what's needed, but if you'd like to see more in-depth Task Blocking videos, I do have a few that are linked in the description below. And just to say this now, I will not be covering Crystalia, the Wilderness Slayer Master. Also, this guide is mostly a matter of opinion. I know not everyone will agree with the tasks that I choose to block, but how I see it, they are the best to block for a more AFK experience while slaying. As usual, I want to get into the quests that will reward you with Slayer experience. There are a few of them, and some of them are actually mini quests. Natural History Quiz, which is a mini quest, will reward you with 1000 Slayer experience. Recipe for Disaster, the Dwarven subquest, is also 1000. Animal Magnetism for 1000. The General Shadow, another mini quest, with 2000. Royal Trouble, 5000. Wanted, 5000. The Lair of Tarn, Razalor. Mini quest, also 5,000. The Fremenic Exiles, 15,000. Monkey Madness 2, 25,000. And the Champions Challenge, which involves Champion Scrolls, is an invisible mini quest. And this will give you 36,680 Slayer experience for a total of 81,680 quest experience to the Slayer skill. All right, so the first thing that I want to start off with is the explanation of blocking tasks and how you do it. On the screen now is the interface you'll see when speaking to a Slayer Master about rewards. On the Tasks tab, you'll have the ability to block certain tasks. Now you'll want to use these sparingly and in a certain way which benefits you the most. Now obviously you can block tasks if you really don't like them, but depending on their task weight, it might be a bad idea. And just as a quick explanation about task weight, task weight is basically the odds that you will get a certain task. Some have higher weights and some have lower weights. You'll want to focus on blocking bad tasks with higher weights because you'll be assigned them more often than those with lower weights, so in the end, it's better to skip the bad tasks with lower task weights rather than block them because in the long run, you'll be spending more points to constantly skip the bad higher weighted tasks. In order to block a task, you'll need to be assigned the task, and then you'll need to spend 100 Slayer points to block that task. You'll gain these Slayer points by having a task streak. Your streak will increase by one for every task you complete. You'll also get points bonuses from the Slayer Masters on every 10th, 50th, 100th, 250th, and 1000th task. I'll talk about that a little bit later with each Slayer Master. One thing to note here is that if you cancel a task using this screen, it will not end your streak. Canceling a task through the Slayer Master that has assigned it or any of the better Slayer Masters will not end your streak. The only thing that will end your streak is if you use Turiel in Berthorp to give you a new weaker assignment. That will end your streak. There are four Slayer Masters that I will be focusing on for this video, and they are Chaldar, Konar, Neve or Steve, who are one and the same, and Duradel. I will explain what each Slayer Master's requirements are, as well as the tasks you should be blocking for a lazier time with Slayer. Essentially, we'll want to be doing the more AFK tasks as much as we possibly can, and what makes these tasks more AFK is the monster's aggression. If they are aggressive, you'll generally have 10 to 15 minutes of AFK Slayer training until you have to reset their aggression by running a slight distance away from their roam range and then returning. The first Slayer Master that I'm going to cover is Chaldar. 
This Slayer Master is located in the Lost City of Xenaris, which is only accessible after the completion of the Lost City quest. As usual, if you need a guide for this, I have left links in the description below for both written and video guides. So that's the first thing you'll need to use Chaldar as your Slayer Master. In addition to this, you'll also need to have level 70 combat to be assigned tasks from Chaldar. I'm going to suggest that you actually don't start the Slayer skill until you're level 70 combat. Chaldar gives much better tasks than any of the lower level Slayer Masters, and you'll also be a bit more prepared for the Slayer skill if you have higher combat. Now, as for blocking tasks with Chaldar, I'm actually going to suggest that you don't block any tasks. You will want to be saving your Slayer points for blocking tasks down the road with Neaver Steve or Duradel, as these are the Slayer Masters you'll be using for the majority of your leveling. So throughout using Chaldar as your Slayer Master, you'll pretty much want to be doing every task no matter what it is, so you can save up those Slayer points for certain unlocks and blocking tasks down the road. I will say that it's fine to skip a task here and there if you really can't stand it, but it's best to save up as many Slayer points as possible. As for the points that Chaldar rewards, you will get 10 points for every task completed, and your bonuses will be 50 points every 100th, 150 points every 50th, 250 points every 100th, 350 points every 250th, and 500 points for every 1000th task. The next Slayer Master is going to be Konar, who is located on top of Mount Karum. Mount Karum is just northeast of the Farming Guild and can be accessed quickly by using a skills necklace to teleport to the Farming Guild or using the Fairy Ring code CIR. If you have the Karend Elite Diaries completed, you will also have the option to teleport pretty much right next to Konar using the Blessing that is rewarded by completing the Diaries. In order to use Konar, you'll need to have a combat level of 75. Now some of you out there may not agree with this, but I'm going to suggest not using Konar at all unless you are level 95 Slayer or higher and you're trying to get a Hydra or Alchemical Hydra task. The reason I say this is because Konar assigns tasks of certain monsters that must be hunted in certain areas. For example, there are several areas in the game where Bloodvelds can be found. Konar can assign the Bloodvelds, but then they will have to be hunted in the specific area that she says. She does assign some decent AFK tasks, but in my opinion, more often than not, you'll be getting tasks which require more attention than others. If on a task assigned by Konar, you will be able to get Brimstone Keys which open the chest next to her. There are decent items that you can receive from Konar's chest, and the average value per key is around 100,000 GP. Even still, I suggest foregoing using Konar and just sticking with Chaldar until level 85 combat. But in case you decide you do want to use Konar, I'll still go through the points she awards as well as the 6 best tasks to block for an AFK experience. As for points, Konar will give the most Slayer points out of any non-Wilderness Slayer Master. Every completed Konar task will give you 18 points, every 10th, 90 points, 50th, 270 points, 100th, 450 points, 250th, 630 points, and every 1000th task, 900 points. If you happen to have the current Elite Diaries done, these points go up slightly. With the Elite Diaries done, every task will net you 20 points, every 10th, 100th, 50th, 300, 100th, 500th, 250th, 700, and every 1000th task will get you 1000 Slayer points. As for the tasks you should block from Konar, I'll list them off and give you an explanation. Drakes, these actually require level 84 Slayer to be assigned, so you might want to wait a little bit down the road before you block them. They're somewhat annoying to kill, and their GP per hour isn't good. Worms, these require level 62 Slayer to kill. They also don't provide much profit. They're somewhat low level and are killed pretty quickly, making them not very AFK. Bloodvelds, level 50 Slayer is needed for these. Most of the Bloodveld locations aren't in a multi-combat zone, and they have a low defense level. They die pretty quickly and won't give you much time to not pay attention. Jellies, these require level 52 Slayer to kill. Although you can aggro a lot of them in the catacombs, their experience and drop table is subpar, so I believe this merits a permanent block. Iron Dragons, although they can be pretty AFK, they're very slow experience per hour, and their drop table is not very good. Last one, Steel Dragons. I suggest blocking these for the same reason as Iron Dragons. Now in other instances, these may be bad blocks for some people or they might be good blocks for others. I personally think they are good blocks for the purpose of being AFK. The rest of the tasks that Konar assigns are pretty AFK and be, can be done that way. So what I've done is just eliminated the ones that might give you the most trouble and might make you pay the most attention. At level 85 combat, you will have the ability to use Neve or Steve depending on where you're at with questing in the game. 
Regardless of whether it's Neve or Steve, they both assign the same tasks. Neve and Steve are located outside of the Stronghold Slayer Cave, which is in the Gnome Stronghold. You can get there by using a Royal Seed Pod, Spirit Trees, or a Slayer Ring to teleport to the Stronghold Slayer Cave. At this point, you'll have two options. You can use Neve or Steve all the way to 99 Slayer, or you can switch to Duradel at level 100 combat. If you're looking for tasks that generally give faster experience, you'll want to stick with Neve or Steve. If you're looking to make the most profit from Slayer, you'll want to switch to Duradel at level 100 combat. I will cover him next. As for the points from Neve and Steve, every task will grant you 12 Slayer points, every 10th, 60, Every 50th, 180, 100th task, 300, 250th task, 420, and every 1,000th task will get you 600 points. If you happen to have the Western Province's Elite Diaries completed, the points increase to match those of Duradel, which are 15 points every task. 10th task, 75 points. 50th, 225, 100th, 375. Every 250th, 525, and every 1,000th task, 750 points. As for the tasks assigned by Neve or Steve, you can do them in any area the monster is found as it won't have the location restriction that Konar's tasks do. So as for the block tasks, first, Sukas, if you have the Lunar Diplomacy quest started or completed, you will be assigned these at a decent rate. They provide no monetary gain and are pretty annoying to kill as they use both magic and melee. Drakes, again, you'll need level 84 Slayer for these, but for the same reason as before, they're annoying and tough to kill and don't provide much profit. Worms, you'll need level 62 Slayer to be assigned these, but also, as I said before, they die fairly quickly and don't provide much profit. I think they should be blocked. Cave Horrors, these are just annoying to kill in general. You will need to have the Cabin Fever quest done to receive these as a task, but they're low HP and not very AFK, so I suggest blocking them. If you don't have the Cabin Fever quest done and don't plan on doing it for a while, you can have the opportunity to block something else that you wouldn't like to kill on a regular basis. Next is Fossil Island Wyverns. You'll need level 66 Slayer to be assigned these, although you can kill whichever variant you want providing you have the Slayer level. They'll need to be meleeed for the best efficiency, and their damage can't be completely negated. You'll have to pay a bit of attention to both your prayer and HP. Compared to Skeletal Wyverns, which can be safe spotted, I don't believe they're worth the time. Iron Dragons, once again I suggest blocking these because their experience per hour isn't great and their drop table is even worse. And finally, for the last Slayer Master, Duradel, who is located in Shiloh Village, you'll need to have level 50 Slayer as well as level 100 Combat to use him as your Slayer Master. I want to suggest having the Lunar Diplomacy quest done for using Duradel, as you'll be able to use the NPC Contact spell to be assigned tasks from him. He is a bit of a runaway from any transportation spots if you don't have the Karamja Diaries completed. If you do have the Hard Diaries done, you can use the Karamja Gloves to teleport to the Shiloh Village Gem Mine, which is relatively close as it's in the same village, and if you have the Elite Diaries done, you can teleport directly to Duradel. As for Duradel's points, he gives 15 points per task. Every 10th task you will get 75, every 50th, 225, every 100th, 375, every 250th, 525, and every 1000th task will net you 750 points. For Duradel's block list, I suggest the following. Drakes, these do require level 84 Slayer to kill, so you will be blocking them a little bit later in your Slayer journey. They're annoying and tough to kill and don't provide much profit. Sukas, once again, you'll need the Lunar Diplomacy quests completed to be assigned these, but they do have a task weight of 8 with Duradel, so you'll see them somewhat frequently. They use both magic and melee and provide no monetary gain. Worms, Slayer level of 62 required to kill them, and they also carry a task weight of 8. They die quickly and provide little profit. Steel Dragons, Steel Dragons generally take a while to kill. They don't provide much experience per hour, and their only good drop is the Draconic Visage. If you want to count the Dragon Plate Legs and Skirt as a good drop, by all means you can. The downside to the drop of the Draconic Visage is the chances of getting it are 1 in 10,000. Fossil Island Wyverns, you'll need a Slayer level of 66 for these and have completed the Bone Voyage quest. Their drop table isn't good, it's not possible to negate all their damage and generally just be a pain to deal with. And last task is Iron Dragons, you'll want to block these for the same reason as Steel Dragons. Alright, so that brings me to the end of the Slayer Masters you'll be using, their points, and what tasks you should block for the most AFK time. I do want to reiterate here, you may not mind some of these tasks that I have listed, so it's entirely up to you if you'd like to block them. If there's a task in here that you really don't mind, but can't stand another, by all means, block the one that makes you want to pull your hair out. 
The next thing I'll be covering is going to be the Slayer Unlocks. Just like blocking tasks, you will be able to view and access these by speaking to a Slayer Master about rewards. The unlocks will cost different amounts of Slayer points depending on how valuable the unlock is considered. There are a few that we'll want to focus on to make our lives easier. The very first unlock you'll want to focus on is the Malevolent Masquerade. This unlock will give you the ability to create the Slayer Helmet, providing you also have level 55 crafting. Keep in mind that you will also need level 13 defense to equip the Slayer Helmet. The Slayer Helmet will combine all of the headgear used for Slayer into one helmet. To create this, you will need a spiny helmet, face mask, earmuffs, a nose peg, and a black mask. The spiny helmet, face mask, earmuffs, and nose peg can be bought from any Slayer Master, while the black mask will need to be acquired as a drop from Cave Horrors, or more conveniently, bought from the Grand Exchange if you aren't an Iron Man. The reason we want this unlock is because the helmet itself obviously has its uses due to the different headgear parts, but it will also carry over the plus 15% boost to attack and strength while on a Slayer task. I haven't mentioned this until now, but the black mask will also give you this boost, so you'll want to be using the black mask whenever you can even before you have the Slayer helmet unlocked just for that boost. Additionally, you can spend some time at the Nightmare Zone minigame to imbue the Slayer helmet or black mask, which will then allow the Slayer helmet to give you that plus 15% boost to ranged and magic as well. Just as a quick note, if you do imbue the black mask before having the Slayer helmet, then use it later to make that Slayer helmet, the Slayer helmet will also be imbued. You will not have to take the time to get the points and do it again. For your second Slayer points purchase, we will jump over to the Buy tab. Your next purchase will be the Herb Sack, which costs 750 Slayer points. Now I know this is a lot of points, but the Herb Sack is able to hold up to 30 grimy herbs of each type. Throughout the Slayer skill, having the Herb Sack is incredibly beneficial. You can potentially leave millions of GP and herbs on the ground and throughout getting 99 Slayer. Personally, I took the Herb Sack with me on just about any task where the monster drops herbs. You don't want to be missing out on all of that profit. You'll also see in here the Rune Pouch. Now you can buy this at your discretion, but I suggest getting it somewhere down the road. Maybe when you start getting into the PVM and bossing scene, it's not very important before that. Now we can head back over to the unlock tab and check out some more useful unlocks. Now these don't have to be done in the order that I'm listing them off because obviously some of you may have different ideas for what you want to do or just maybe at a certain point in Slayer so you'll more or less want to unlock these when it's convenient for you to do so. The Gargoyle Smasher is a great unlock to get as soon as you hit level 75 Slayer. This unlock will automatically use your Rock Hammer or Rock Throne Hammer on Gargoyles to finish them off. If you don't have this unlock, you'll need to click the hammer and then the monster every time you're near the end of the kill. I also suggest unlocking the Seeing Red unlock for 50 Slayer points. This will allow Konar, Neve and Steve, and Duradel to assign you Red Dragon tasks. If you decide to do this one, you can kill the Brutal Red Dragons in the Catacombs of Karend, which can be a decent profit as well as a decently AFK Slayer task. The next one I suggest unlocking is the Hot Stuff unlock. This will allow Chaldar, Neve and Steve, and Duradel to assign you Zar tasks. Zars have decently high HP and defense stats, can be AFK'd pretty well, and you can get some GP from Obsidian Drops. Additionally, if you don't have a Fire Cape yet and you're looking to give it a shot, you can choose to either kill Jad or the Zar creatures. Having the use of the Slayer Helmet throughout your Jad runs is very beneficial if you have it imbued and you're getting that plus 15% to ranged. The next one is optional. Now for this guide, I'm generally showing you the more lazy way to get to 99 Slayer, but if you'd like to mix it up and have some fun with some bosses in there, you can unlock like a boss, which will allow Konar, Neve, and Steve, and Duradel to assign boss tasks. You'll be able to pick how many bosses you want to kill. You are allowed to pick between 3 and 35. Bigger and Batter is also a great unlock to have, and I suggest unlocking this one pretty early. This will allow you to have the chance to kill superior creatures. Superior creatures have a chance to spawn when you kill one of the less superior variants. These superiors are the only monsters in the game which drop the Imbued Heart and the Internal Slayer Gem. The last one I suggest is for later down the road, and of course if you have the extra Slayer points to spare. Stop the Wyvern will stop you from getting Fossil Island Wyvern tasks, and this will not count against your block task limit. I was already 99 Slayer when this unlock was added, so I didn't need to worry about it, but if I wasn't 99 Slayer, I would definitely grab this and then replace the block task that I listed earlier in the video with something else you might not care too much for. Up next, we will cover task extensions. There are plenty of Slayer monsters in which you can extend the tasks to get more time to AFK and generate more income from the Slayer skill. After your level 90, I suggest purchasing the Need More Darkness extension for Dark Beasts. Dark Beasts are always aggressive, you will never have to reset the aggro for this monster, making it a great AFK task. 
Anku Very Much is another good task extension as these monsters are aggressive. You will have to reset the aggro here every so often, but it's definitely worth the extension. The next one is Fire and Darkness. This will extend Black Dragon tasks. Brutal Black Dragons in the Catacombs of Karend are a pretty decent AFK task and can net you a good amount of profit per hour. Definitely a nice extension to have. The Rune Unlock is nice to have as well. Rune Dragons aren't quite as AFK as Brutal Black Dragons, but they aren't too bad. They're also even better GP per hour than Brutal Black Dragons. You'll need to have finished Dragon Slayer 2 to kill the Rune Dragons, so make sure you've got that quest done before getting this unlock. Spiritual Fervor is also a nice extension to have once you're level 68 Slayer. In the Zamorak section of the God Wars dungeon, you can aggro several spiritual warriors at a time, turn on Protect from Melee, and get a good 5 minutes of AFK time in at a time. Greater Challenge is great to have as no matter where you go for Greater Demons, they are always aggressive toward you for that 10 to 15 minute period. You will then have to reset the aggro. It's Dark in here is also a beneficial unlock. Black Demons are extremely AFK due to being aggressive as well as having a high hit points level. Bleed Me Dry is something you'll also want to have. I suggest always killing Mutated Bloodvelds in the Catacombs of Karend if you're assigned Bloodvelds as they're technically stronger but they actually just have a lot more HP and better drops than the normal blood belts. You can aggro 5 or 6 of these at a time then just AFK until you need to do another round of aggroing. Mutated blood belts are great combat experience per hour. Smell you later will extend your aberrant specter tasks. You can also do deviant specters in the catacombs of Karend which are stronger and much more AFK than the aberrant specters. Not to mention lots of herbs to put in your herb sack once you have it. To Dust You Shall Return is a good extension for the same reason as Bloodvelds. The Catacombs of Karen Dust Devils are stronger, have more HP, and are great combat experience per hour. You can aggro 5 of them at a time and just AFK until they've all been slayed. Wyvern Another One will extend Skeletal Wyverns. Skeletal Wyverns have a high defense and HP level and are great AFK ranged experience, and additionally they can be safe spotted. Get Smashed will extend your Gargoyle tasks. Gargoyles are aggressive for that 10 to 15 minute window and can be decent GP per hour. Next please will extend your Necrail tasks. The Necrails in the Catacombs of Karend are pretty strong and can be aggroed then AFK'd for a good amount of time. However, if you're looking for more GP per hour, you might want to kill the ones in the Mauritania Slayer Tower. Necrails are susceptible to the Arclight which does increase damage to demon race NPCs. Augment My Abbeys will extend Abyssal Demon tasks. Abyssal Demons have decent defense level along with a higher HP level making them great for a long relaxing task. The last one I suggest having extended is the Crack On. This will extend your Kraken tasks. I suggest always doing the Kraken boss because it's very AFK and requires little attention. Not to mention, you'll always profit from these tasks. If you do extend these tasks, they can take anywhere between 2 and 4 hours depending on your magic level, but you'll have a chance at a boss pet. So that's it for unlocks, extension, and buys. I do want to throw in here, you can unlock the ring bling at your discretion. This will give you the ability to make your own slayer rings, which will teleport you to various slayer locations. It's nice to have, but not necessary, because there are other ways to get there. So if you've got the points to spare, unlock this when you're ready. You'll also need to have level 75 crafting to make these rings. As for task extensions, you'll only need to buy these once you have the required slayer level to kill the monster in which you are extending. The last thing I'm going to cover is a list of tasks that can be done in a very AFK manner due to the NPC's aggression as well as other factors mostly related to HP and defense stats. This task list will be based off of the tasks that Duradel assigns as most of your Slayer experience should be executed using Duradel as your Slayer Master. The list will still apply to most tasks assigned by Chaldar and Neve or Steve as well. Aberrant Spectres or Deviant Spectres require 60 Slayer, Abyssal Demons at 85 Slayer, Anku, Black Demons, Brutal Black Dragons, Bloodvelds, Blue Dragons, and Brutal Blue Dragons, Cave Kraken Boss at 87 Slayer, Dagonoths, Dark Beasts at 90 Slayer, Dust Devils at 65 Slayer, Fire Giants, Gargoyles, Greater Demons, Hellhounds, Kurosks, Necrails, Red Dragons, the Brutal Type, Rune Dragons, Skeletal Wyverns, Smoke Devils at level 93 Slayer, you can use a cannon to aggro a lot of them and melee them for a very AFK task. Spiritual Creatures, level 68 for Warriors, and Zar. And here is a short list of monsters that can be easily cannoned, which will also always aggro the monster for you, providing your cannon has ammo in it. Aberrant Spectres in the Stronghold Slayer Cave, Anku in the Stronghold Slayer Cave, Black Demons in the Chasm of Fire or Taverly Dungeon, Bloodvelds in the Stronghold Slayer Cave, 
Blue Dragons in the Taverly Dungeon, Dagonoth in the Lighthouse, Dark Beasts in the Cave Below the Mourner Headquarters, Dust Devils in the Smoke Dungeon, Fire Giants in the Chasm of Fire or Karamja Dungeon, Greater Demons in the Chasm of Fire or Karamja Dungeon, Hellhounds in the Stronghold Slayer Cave or Taverly Dungeon, Calphite in the Calphite Lair, and Trolls on Death Plateau. The Slayer skill is by no means a fast skill if done the way I've explained in this guide, but it can provide you with something like killing two birds with one stone, or rather three in this case. You'll make a decent amount of profit, get Slayer experience, and get combat experience. The skill will take you a long time to get 99 in, probably comparable to the rune crafting skill, if not more, but you will be able to see profits in the area of 250 million GP or more. Alright everybody, that is going to do it for the Lazy Player's Guide to 99 Slayer. I hope that this video can provide you with some insight into the Slayer skill and how you might want to go about doing it. As usual, if you like the video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really do help the video's popularity. If you haven't done so yet, you can tap the subscribe button. It is right down there in the bottom right corner or at the end screen of this video. If you have your ad blocker turned on, maybe consider joining the channel and becoming a channel member. It does support my channel and it goes a long way. So guys, I will see you on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.